What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some of Amari Cooper's best routes from the 2019-2020 season. Guys, I think he's probably one of the best route runners in the NFL. I really don't think there's much to argue about that. And today we're going to break down what makes him so special. Let's get started. And guys, if you're a receiver or a quarterback and you want me to break down here, film, check out that link in the description that says Film Breakdown, guys. Hope I can see some of your film. Hope I can get you signed up on my site, and then we help your game get better in this time of being locked down. So, Main thing I want to talk about here is this stutter, go, stop route, okay? So the main thing about this stutter is we got to get this DB to at least hesitate and then get him to open up those hips and get in no shit mode, okay? So what do I mean by that? I mean his hips are turned, he's thinking fade, he feels our speed, right? So let's watch it full speed, a little stutter, burst up field, then runs this stop route. And you see the separation he's able to get from this DB. So it starts with his initial burst off the line, right? I got to make it all look the same. From point A to point B, it's all got to look the same. So I got to burst off. Violent hands, violent feet, and then burst up again, snap this thing off. So he comes up here fast, and you see this little stutter here, this little hesitation to the inside, little stutter. Gets this DB to at least get a reaction forward, but also to feel his speed, right? It's a stutter, go, stop, right? So he gives him this little stutter. He kicks back up into second gear, and look what this DB's doing. He's going to speed turn out of there because of the speed that Amari Cooper has out of this thing, off this stutter, right? He's got to feel your speed, guys. If we want to get him to open up and turn like this at a speed turn and be able to get in his blind spot, which is what we're in right now, obviously, because he's not even looking at us, we got to be fast. That's the only way we get it. And you see how when he comes off and when he... When he, after the stutter, where are his eyes? His eyes are to the outside, right? This DB's looking at him. He sees that his eyes are out here. Okay, I'm going to speed turn. He's running a fade. That's why every, we got to be a salesman first, right? We got to sell everything with my eyes, sell it with my speed, sell it with my eyes. And then you see when he snaps down in and out of this break, least amount of steps possible, right? Now you see when he's here, he doesn't kind of slow up because all slowing down will do is allow this DB to notice there's no fade and give him more time to break on the ball. I got to be able to be fast and change directions fast. So he snaps down here with this outside leg, right? So he snaps down one, two, three, in and out of the break. Now, here's the thing, though. I would rather take five steps right here than be slow and make sure I get the right amount of steps. So a lot of people take me too literal because you guys, if you guys have been watching me for a long time, you guys know that when I snap down, I want it to be in one, two, three steps and my eyes are already back to the quarterback. I'm already out of this break. I take these extra steps to kind of get myself settled. But what a lot of people do is they take it too literal and they think, oh, okay, I got to get the extra steps. That's the only key. And they'll slow themselves down and they'll go one, two, three, but they slow they, their speed deteriorates, right? They lose their speed. So this DB is going to be able to just recover. I'd rather be fast and take extra steps because we can get rid of those extra steps. That just has to do with your hips and your snap down being violent like Cooper has right here. You see how he's violent dropping these hips, trying to bring that chin to his knee. That's how we get separation. Now it helps that this DB isn't even looking. He's not even feeling it. But when we could snap down in his blind spot when he has no idea of where we're at, that's a recipe for a lot of separation. Five yards of space. Great job by Mari Cooper. Let's watch it full speed one more time. So again, little stutter, snap this thing down, one, two, three, in and out of this break. Great job, great route here. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at this fade here. We're going to talk about how he leaves him to the inside with his feet. Now, this is like if you guys watch the NFL Combine, um, you see the releases like real real popular clip of uh, C.D. Lamb working that one, two off the line of scrimmage, and then he catches that fade and he high points it. This is the game time situation for that, okay? So close the gap, freeze this DB with my pace off the line, and then leave him to the inside and get some separation. So freeze him leave him then just burst up field balls coming over the top great ball by the quarterback late hands over the top don't give this db any time to react so again see how when he comes off here hesitation move right closing the gap of this db getting this db in a back pedal or just getting his feet his feet to be flat right it's trying to stop his feet now i want to give this one two and leave him to the inside now how do i do that my feet got to be sudden and my upper half is what's got to turn this db because again he's going to be watching your number he's not looking at your eyes he shouldn't be at least and he's definitely not looking at your feet okay Okay, so again, we come off, freeze him, left, right, leave him. Now, I want you to see how quick this second step was. This is why Cooper is so dangerous because of how sudden and quick and explosive his feet are. And then you see that little head and shoulder lean, right? All I need is this DB to get some weight on this outside leg. And you see his cleats are out of the ground. I'm driving off the inside arch of my foot, and I'm exploding up into this route. That's going to get me some space as it is, right? And I don't need a lot, especially at this high of a level. A lot of space, especially with good quarterbacks, 
quarterbacks that could put the ball on a dime. You don't need a whole lot of a space. They could throw you open. So, again, freeze him, leave him to the inside, and you see the acceleration off that release. If you pop up and we're cruising out of it, DB recovers fine, right? All I need is a couple steps, right? All I need is a couple steps. Then it's on that quarterback to throw it in the back of the end zone. All we are all we should get is a couple steps, right? If, if it's good football, good DB, good receiver, but we can get a couple steps, it's on that quarterback, throw it a good throw a good ball, and then we did our job. You know what I mean? And that's exactly what happened in here and now we got to take care of our job at the catch right because look this db what's he playing he's waiting for my hands to go up he's waiting he's looking he knows my eyes are up he knows the ball's coming but i'm not showing my hands too early i let this thing drop right at the last second right in the bucket late hands don't allow this db to react and rip through my hands if i show my hands too early he's just going to rip them right through and knock this ball out late hands don't give that db any time to react great job by mari cooper let's watch it full speed one more time so freeze him off the line with your tempo Leave him to the inside. Go catch his face. So freeze him. One, two, leave him. Then burst up field. Accelerate off it. Late hands. Great job here by Mari Cooper. So now we're going to talk about just straight up fade. All right. So let's watch it full speed. Then we'll break it down. So kind of tempos him off the line of scrimmage and then burst up field. Right. This kind of seam route. Right. Seam. Kind of almost like a. I would consider it a seam. Almost looks a little bit too far over the middle, but I would consider it a seam. So this DB's already closed off. He's already opened up this gate, so he wants to just turn and run with us, right? So off the line of scrimmage, if I see a DB already turned and he knows I'm not giving up the inside, I'm a play man, I'm just going to turn and run with you, right? Maybe he knows that, that he, uh, Cooper's going downfield, right? So... I got to change up my tempo, right? He thinks I ha he has my tempo down. He thinks he understands my speed. He thinks he knows where I'm going. So I come off and I give him this little slow play release, trying to lull him inside, trying to hold him here. So you see this little slide release. What's common is a lot of guys will do this slide release, then they give a one-two, and then they run an inside. They take an inside release. They run a slant, right? So maybe he's burned him one time with that during the game. It's all a setup. It's all a mind game out there. But again, slowing up my pace slows down his pace because look what happens to his feet. Feet get real close together he slows himself down that weights on the inside i know where i'm going so i can just kick up into second gear when you're when you know you're faster than db this is a great way to get space right you try he thinks he's got your speed he thinks he knows how fast he's got to get off the line of scrimmage and then i come back and i hit him with a slow play release kind of hesitation i kick up into second gear and i i already had the head start because i know when i'm gonna break he doesn't so if we can just get to that situation where we're neck and neck like this i'm going straight forward this db has to open up his hips I'm going to win every time, especially when I'm faster than this DB. And then you see the separation that he's able to get. Let's watch it full speed one more time. Great job using this kind of hesitation, walk-off release. And we're going to look at that a couple more times during this clip. So hesitate, kick up into second gear. When we know we're faster than this guy, quicker slots on a linebacker, a strong safety walk down. It's a great release to use. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at kind of this almost... Post corner, post out concept here. Let's watch it full speed. So it comes off again. That same walk release inside. Break this thing off. And he's running this out. So I would consider this like a post out almost. Okay. So because he breaks it off flat, a lot of people think it might be a post corner. But we're going to talk about that too because I get that question asked a lot. So again, this DB immediately opens up, right? So he's probably got safety help over the middle. He's not going to play man coverage opening up like this. I can't see the middle of the field, but I, I guarantee you there's probably some help over the middle of the field. You already got this linebacker dropping. So opening it up, we know that we could probably take this inside release, right? But I got to be able to run every single route, whether it's an inside release or an outside release, okay? I got to have different plans to run every single route. But on this especially, I would love to run an inside release because I want to get him undercutting this thing. So again, kind of gives him slow play here. And what does it do? Gets the DB's feet to stop, gets his tempo to stop. So I automatically have a head start when I decide to go. I got this head start. Now what's he doing? Eyes to the inside, shoulders to the inside. What does that make this DB do? He commits his shoulders, right? Now I'm, I'm assuming I got safety help over the top, right? Maybe it's like a... Like a man cover, two man look. I'm, I'm not too sure right now, but I know for a fact that probably got some help over the middle because he's not just going to give up the inside. So why not play outside from the DB's perspective? But how I can get him to jump and how I break this thing back out is my eyes and my shoulders to the middle of the field, right? So I come off here, two, three, sudden stick. And again, look at his body, head and shoulder fake to the inside, very sudden with his feet. What was I saying? That's the best. That's why he gets so much separation, how quick and how explosive his feet are and how violent his upper half is. 
gets the DB to be greedy, gets him to undercut this thing. And then now when I'm in this position, guys, this is why it's an out because he flattens this thing out. That's why I call it post out, blaze out, whatever you want to call it. He accelerates out and he pumps his arms. Major key to getting separation because we're not open yet. I got to make sure I continue to get separation. I got to pump my arms out of this break and come back to that ball. Great job by Amari Cooper here getting some separation on this post out look. Let's watch it full speed one more time. So, again, kind of lull him to sleep, kick up into second gear. Eyes to the inside, your eyes tell lies. Guys, got to get that DB to bite. Great job here by Maury Cooper. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at this kind of almost slant out concept here. Okay, I know there's probably a couple different names for that, but just depending on scheme, or depending on your playbook, what your coach wants to call it, that's just basically what it is. I'm going to be running a slant, breaking this thing back off on an out, okay? But it's going to be more so, I, I wouldn't consider it a whip because he's not squared up, but some of you might. It's just, it, it depends. So he's coming off here, jab to the outside, eyes inside, break this thing off, get that DB to overcommit again, then catch this touchdown. Great man coverage look right here, okay? So he kind of gives him this hesitation, DB staying square, right? So gathering info. How is he going to be playing this thing? He's playing square. He's not bailing out of there. So I'm going to try to get him set up to the outside, take an inside release, get him to overcommit, then break this thing out right now, okay? And again, guys, this is something that comes in the offseason. This is something that comes from running one-on-ones, routes versus air, working the technique, because Cooper ain't thinking about this right now. He's thinking about just the play, the timing of the play, the coverage. He's going over everything that's in game, right? He's not thinking about, oh, I'm going to do this release because he's going to do this and these do this. There's too much to think about. It's just second nature for him, right? Going into this game, studied film, has about five, six releases he's going to work five six different scenarios that he knows is going to work because of his film study that's why i can't stress film study enough and then he just rolls with it that's how he that's how you know what to do in a game time scenario it's not you go out there first play of the game and it's a guessing game that's not how it is that's not how a successful receiver approaches the game and he approaches the game like quarterback so again a little hesitation jab to the outside now what does that do gets this db lean in here so now when i burst up to the inside of the field even with his hands on me all i know is i just got to get this hand off right here because this hand does not play a factor when i'm trying to take an inside release it's going to get him to overcommit and be an oh shit mode like we talked about right so coming off here jab accelerate to the inside now DB's running, right? He doesn't want to get beat on this slant. Maybe we beat him with that same release on a slant before. So everything's a setup, right? I go down. Even if I'm not getting the ball, let's say my job's to run the guy off. If I beat him with a wide step and I accelerate into inside, he's going to remember that and he's going to feel my speed. So he's going to be overcommitted. And now I just drop and break this thing off. Now, again, how does he get in and out of this break? Running full speed, your hips is what change direction when you're running full speed. So when I'm running full speed, my hips got to drop violently. That's the only way I'm able to change direction. And now he's in and out of it in two steps. This outside plant leg is going to drive him back on this out. And you see what it does to this DB. The low man wins, right? So when I'm lower than he is and he's standing real tall, that's going to get me a bunch of separation. And you see how he drives out of there and he's physical, right? Let's get those hands off of me. Let's get those hands off because when I'm in the goal line and this DB does not have separation and I'm accelerating out of the brake pump in my arms, I get a lot of space. Great job by Mari Cooper. Let's watch it full speed one more time. It's so coming off here, jab, accelerate to the inside, one, two. In and out of this thing, wide step, get him to overcommit on that slant. Great job here by Amari Cooper. So now we're going to talk about what happens when this DB plays it well, right? Because the DB does not play this route bad. Let's watch it full speed one more time. So he comes off, a little hesitation, jab to the inside, trying to take this outside release. DB plays it good. I just think he turned his head around maybe a little bit too soon. But Cooper does a great job burning him with late hands here, okay? So what's he doing? This is a little bit of his catch technique, right? Man coverage, he's off. He's about, he's kind of in that... Like two to three yard range, maybe, or three to four, three to five yard range, where I like that as a receiver because all we got to do is close the gap with him and give him a move out or give him a move in to try to hold him inside or try to hold him outside. Okay, that's all we got to do. That's my situation. That's what I'm doing off the line of scrimmage here. So you see, what's he doing? Closing the gap. And where's he attacking? The midline of this DB, right? I want to square him up. I want to get him in a back pedal, which is exactly what I do. And you see how he makes this jab to the inside, right? Sudden feet again, violent upper half. D DB just plays this thing very well. He plays this thing very well. He's he's not we're not open yet, right? So we're accelerating at the top. Now he doesn't have hands on us, but DB's still in a good position to make this play. I think he just peeks back a little bit too soon because Cooper ain't showing his hands yet. He has no idea where the ball is, tries to play the ball, and Cooper has those late hands over the top, right? I can't stress this enough, guys. Any especially in a goal line situation, late hands is gonna be your best friend. Don't let this DB react. Don't let this DB know when the ball's coming, okay? So that's what we do. What we can't just give up on the play. DB plays it well, I can't just quit on it. I still gotta accelerate outside he's hugging the sideline a little bit too much here but i still gotta accelerate outside 
and to show late hands. All right, let's watch it full speed. So coming off, jab, not a bad jab. Just DB plays it great. Sometimes DB's going to play it good. Just get him with those late hands. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it, guys. And again, if you want to get me to break down your film, please check out that link in the description that says Film Breakdown. You sign up on my website, only 10 bucks a month, and you could submit um, – one anywhere from one to five clips depending on the plan that you purchase guys and i'll see you guys next time